Closed captioning for Education Matters is sponsored by Will Lou Gray Opportunity School, Margaret's Garden Adult Daycare, and Aiken Regional Medical Centers. Attention parents and grandparents, have you had the talk with your children? Young people, teen pregnancy prevention is on the decrease. We're going to talk about all of that and much, much more here inside of Education Matters. Education Matters is next. Good morning and welcome inside a brand new segment of Education Matters. My name is Donna Moore Westby, your host of Education Matters, where learning is living. As they say, viewer discretion advised. Yes, we want to go ahead and issue that disclaimer today. We will be talking about sex. Teen pregnancy prevention or teen pregnancy, I should say, is on the decrease, but we still have some work to do. Inside today's broadcast, we have a representative from the Richmond County Board of Health, as well as some teenagers who will help us shed light on a very, very important topic today. So we hope you stay with us the entire hour. Of course, we thank you for watching WRDW Channel 12. Hopefully you enjoyed Charles Stanley. I always watch Charles Stanley, and he certainly helps to set the tone for a great day. We'd like to thank and acknowledge the sponsors of Education Matters. They make it possible for us to continue the mission of Education Matters. Our corporate sponsors, brand new sponsor, Aiken Regional Medical Centers. We sure appreciate your support. Will Lou Gray Opportunity School out of West Columbia, South Carolina's premier alternative education school. Westby's Products and Services creator of Don Seasoning Delight All-Purpose Seasoning and Marinade, that is my husband. Security Federal Bank, there is a Security Federal near you. Also, Margaret's Garden Adult Daycare. Yes, they are now open receiving clients and we sure hope you will give them a try. The University of South Carolina in Aiken, the sponsor, one of the sponsors of the Education Matters Are You Ready to Be Grown conference coming up on Saturday, August the 1st. Howell Printing out of Aiken, your full service printer, also offering graphic design services. And then finally, on our corporate sponsors, Access Chiropractic, where the chiropractor is, the awesome Dr. Blair Bradley. Thanks so much to all of our corporate sponsors. And then moving on to our friends of Education Matters. These are individuals just like you now. You can become a part of the sponsorship family. Isaac and Betty Rucker, of course, my parents, Bill and Joy Bradley, Miss Sharon White, and Henry and Nancy Craig, all of Aiken. If you're interested in becoming a part of the sponsorship family, you will receive those details in today's segment. Quickly moving on now to this week's chalkboard reminder. I'm sure some of you are already ready. You've got the holidays written down and circled on your calendars. So this is probably no surprise to you, but Memorial Day is Monday, May the 25th. Yes, it's coming up. Take time now to remember and pay homage to those fallen men and women who unselfishly serve in the United States Armed Services. That is your chalkboard reminder for this week. All right, love that bell. So many of you love the bell. I'm excited about that. That sound means it's word of the week time inside of Education Matters. Every week inside of this broadcast, we do provide you with a brand new word of the week. Yes, and uh, at the recent WRDW Time to Care Family Fair, so many of you participated in our word of the week word search and you love it. So here it is, this week's word of the week to help us all learn and grow is famished. Famished, you've heard it before. Famished is an adjective and it means extremely hungry or starving, all right? So the next time you are very, very hungry, try this new word on for size. Woo, I'm so famished, okay? Here is this week's sentence. He was famished by dinner time 
because he had not eaten all day. Okay, that is your word of the week. Now practice it, have fun with it. Make uh, index cards, flashcards, so that uh, we can all continue to learn and grow. Now, as I tell you every week, for a continuous list of our words of the week, just go to this website. Here it is for you on the screen. Thank you, Lauren. www.edmat.com, short for Education Matters, okay? E-D-M-A-T-T dot com. Or you can also write me, so many of you have, to give me feedback on the broadcast or to ask a question or to even give story ideas. There it is, Donna Wesby at AOL.com. Okay, moving on to this week's grammar lesson of the week, and it's a, a, a continuation of last week's word, uh, excuse me, grammar lesson of the week, where we talked about indefinite pronouns. Here's a refresher on that. An indefinite pronoun refers to a person, place, or thing in a more general way than a personal pronoun does. If the indefinite pronoun is singular, it takes a singular verb, okay? If it is plural, it takes a plural verb, all right? Some indefinite pronouns may take either a singular or a plural verb depending on the context of the sentence, all right? Now, let's go on to plural indefinite pronouns. Here they are. Both, few, many, others, and several, all right? Those are your plural indefinite pronouns. And here are some examples to help you see the subject and verb agreement for plural indefinite pronouns. Both of the movies were good. Not both of the movies was good, okay? Both is a plural pronoun, which requires the plural form of the verb. Both of the movies were good. Next example. Only a few live in that neighborhood, not lives, okay? And the way you check yourself is use the singular or the plural uh, pronoun. He lives, they live, okay? They is plural, so is only, all right? Last example, several of those teenagers visit the nursing home monthly not visits, all right? That is your grammar lesson of the week. I sure hope that helps someone today. And remember, right here inside of Education Matters, we do provide you with the word of the week and a grammar lesson of the week as well. All right, before we uh, go to some public service announcements, I want to uh, share with you that on this past weekend, I got the awesome opportunity to meet so many of you during the WRDW Time to Care Family Fair that was held last Saturday at Augusta Commons from 11 to 3.30. It was a gorgeous day, a little windy at first, but the weather was awesome. It was fantastic. And I wanna give shouts out now to WRDW's Amanda for organizing and coordinating such a wonderful family event. I've got several pictures to share. Uh, here you, you can see our Education Matters display we set up. Uh, and of course, we wouldn't be Education Matters if we didn't have a variety of educational games. We had our Word of the Week crossword puzzle. The children, they could uh, do addition, subtraction, multiplication, read some words, read some books, and everybody walked away with prizes. Of course, you can see here that we've got some photos of some of our very, very faithful listeners and watchers, and we appreciate that. It was just a phenomenal day. I want to also give shouts out to this young lady and a very special young lady with her mother, and in the wheelchair there is Miss Alana, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. It might be Elena, but she was so thrilled and the joy on her face to actually meet me. And that was very humbling because I tell you all every week, I'm nobody. I'm just somebody that God is choosing to use for this particular mission. And uh, the viewers, you were so great, so gracious to me and loving. Want to also say hello to Miss Kaylee. 
She is a first grader who can read, I think, even better than I can. She will definitely be on this broadcast very soon because I believe she's actually on genius level. So I uh, want to again say hello to everybody uh, and thanks so much for your support. Thanks so much for continuing to pray as well as watch Education Matters. Don't go anywhere. The Sex Talk is coming up next. You're inside of Education Matters. What's up, God's people? It's me, Charity, with this week's segment of Charity's Corner because I've got something to say and I can't hold it in. My parents always tell me, Charity, stay out of grown folks' business. Well, I thought the same concept applied to my age also. See, what had happened was, I was in my room talking to my best friend when my mama bust in the room and asked, what are y'all talking about? I politely said, stay out of young folks' business. Can somebody please help me understand why my mama shouted, Lord, help me to not kill this child? My name is Charity. I guess sometimes things just happen. Devastating things. It's got nothing to do with fairness. Bam. Your whole world changes in an instant. And you never see it coming. That's what happened to me. The day my mother had a stroke. I'm Paul George, and I want you to learn the signs of a stroke fast. F-A-S-T. F, face drooping. A, arm weakness. S, speech difficulty. T, time to call 911. Because the sooner they get to the hospital, the sooner they'll get treatment. And that can make a remarkable difference in their recovery. Protect the ones you love. Spot a stroke. F-A-S-T, fast. You have the best ability to reverse the neurological deficit from the stroke if you give this clot buster within three hours. And the problem is, of course, we wind up coming after that three hour window, which is unfortunate because they had an opportunity to reverse partially or maybe a majority of the stroke deficits that they have had they come in that window of three hours. Time is critical, just like in a heart attack. Experience real personal health care only at Aiken Regional. Welcome back inside of the broadcast. You are watching Education Matters with me, Donna Moore Wesby, where learning is living. Today, inside of the broadcast, learning will certainly be living. We're talking about teen pregnancy prevention. Now, before you turn the dial, okay, I need to issue a disclaimer. Viewer discretion is advised. However, this is a topic we certainly need to uh, continue in our communities. Teen pregnancy is actually considered a top priority for the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And here, joining me today in our next segment of Education Matters is Ms. Platina Wimberly. She is an outreach coordinator, a public outreach public educator, outreach, yes, there we go, <laughs> working for the Richmond County Department of Health. And we welcome you into the broadcast. Great. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, we appreciate you. And I want to say that a couple of weeks ago, maybe a week or two ago, you were my guest on the radio broadcast of Education Matters, WNRR, uh, Gospel 1380 AM. And you did an awesome job. Thank you so and much. And received a lot of positive feedback. Because because, of course, when we're talking about sex and teenagers having sex and uh, what do we say to them when it seems as if all of the information or a lot of information is at their fingertips, it really can be an uncomfortable discussion. But we've got some good news to share with our viewers today. What is that good news about the, the statistics of teen pregnancy? Yes, teen pregnancy prevention. Um, is working. Um, we have seen some decreases, so we're very excited about that. And of course, discussing sexual health, um, it does raise its eyebrows. It is a very <laughs> sensitive topic, um, but we want to make sure that our families and our community are open to 
um, receiving the information and sharing that information with their um, kids and um, the children that are in our community. And, and that's, that's a, uh, I think, a, um, a very admirable mission because, you know, for those baby boomers, those who were born, you know, I'd say. You're going to tell your age, the, Ms. Brown. You're going to well, tell I your tell age. Well, I tell my age all the time, girl. They know I'm 45. Oh, you look good. <laughs> well, thank you. But those who I would say are older than me, my age and older, you know, we may or may not have had the talk, right. the sex talk in our household. So I'm, I'm sure we have some viewers who are like, well, my mama and my daddy didn't talk to me about it. And I kind of stumbled my way through. Right. Why is that dangerous to not have that discussion? Um, you're, and you're exactly right, I agree. Even for uh, my own personal experience, uh, my um, parents just had to talk just that one time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just a tradition um, that we see. Um, but with our young people of this generation, um, it's very, very important that we talk to them at a very young age, um, beginning, you know, um, as, as toddlers talking about as good toddlers? yes talking about good sexual health oh my gosh yes. I don't know about that toddler what ages that's like when they first started to walk correct um, again it's important at that young age so that children will know about their bodies um, do's and don'ts um, and of course um, our bodies are, are natural um, we have feelings and it's okay um, but even young children have feelings just like adults mm -hmm. do. And so we want to make sure that they know um, and demonstrate how to show them um, good sexual health. And so that's why it's so important to share with um, our children um, at a very young age. Um, go ahead and start talking about it instead of waiting till their adolescence or in their teen years. Well, I would imagine, and each parent or grandparent would have to use their judgment based on the maturity level of their child right. or grandchild. Absolutely. But when you talk about sexual health for toddlers, I would imagine maybe you're speaking more about that it's their bodies Correct. and uh, no one should be touching Correct. them in inappropriate places and what are your private parts, Correct. those kinds those of things. Those types of things, okay. absolutely. That's considered sexual health, okay. um, sexuality. So we want to make sure that we're educating um, our children at that young age. Of course, definitely using discretion right. um, and being sensitive um, to, that, to that topic. Um, but it's very, very important um, that we share um, that information. Sometimes we think that, oh, if we um, educate them or share our experiences or information, then they're going to start thinking about it. Right. It would make them want, it would make them want to do them it. Almost give them permission Correct. to go ahead. But that's not the case because mm. we have, they have access to so many um, things on the internet, mm -hmm. um, so many things on the television, even the music that they listen to. Mm -hmm. All of these things are very influential. And, it and they have it, a message. Yes, and it makes it extremely difficult in today's world to parent your child when there is so much ready access That's to right. information, whether it's through internet, social media, uh, the music, as you as you yes. stated. Is that what makes it so imperative that the conversation, the truth, comes from the home? Absolutely. Um, we want to make sure that um, that conversation starts at home. Um, and I encourage um, families, so viewers, I encourage you to please make sure that um, you talk to your um, children at a very young age about um, different topics and be open to it. I know that um, it can be scary, um, but just be open and honest um, and a good listener. And it's okay to share our experiences with um, our children. Just use some discretion, um, but I find that that, that really helps families uh, when, they, when they have those early conversations. I'm glad you say that uh, as an advice to our parents on sharing personal experiences because uh, my husband and I have a very open relationship with our children. We always have. Uh, sometimes a little bit too open because they've said some things and asked us some questions where it was just every bit of control <laughs> we could use to not just pass out on the floor. <laughs> I can remember one time my daughter and I were driving along and uh, she just came right out 
and said something or asked a question about oral um, sex. And I, I was driving at the time, and I'm telling you to hold that steering wheel nice and steady without <laughs> going into the next lane. I just had to kind of just take it all in and breathe and, you know, have a mature conversation. Because the reality is that parents and grandparents, you need to know, even in middle school, that's right. These things are not just being talked about, but some of these things are actually unfortunately happening. And Absolutely. if they don't get the truth from us, if they don't get uh, reality from us saying, right. hey, I went through some of the same things, I had some of the same feelings, right. hormones raging and That's all right. of that, then they may think, well, I'm going through this by myself or right. that my parents really don't understand. Correct. And then that's when they turn to their friends. Mm -hmm. um, that's when they turn to um, the television or the internet or those other sources. Um, and the best source is going to come from, information is going to come from, from, the, from the family. That's right. And so I encourage young people as I work with them on a daily basis and I work with the youth group um, and um, as I advise that youth group, I actually give them the information and they provide peer-to-peer -peer education to the um, other peers mm -hmm. in our community and in their schools. And so um, I want to make sure that kids know that, hey, there are people um, mm -hmm. that you can talk to. Yes. And of course, um, we do have some um, adults who are just not ready to have that <laughs> conversation and it be an um, ongoing conversation. Uh -huh. um, so there are people in place like myself mm -hmm. um, who's willing and able to provide some just education um, for um, for the kids and families. We have lots of families that come into the health department, mm -hmm. um, parents bring them in, just to have um, a sex education talk, just to let them know about their bodies and the way they're feeling. Um, so it can come from someone else, because sometimes kids, um, they don't listen mm -hmm. um, to their parents. Um, they're more than, they're more than willing to listen to other people first mm -hmm. than sometimes to listen to their parents. Well, I think what's fascinating is that it seems as if the kids, the children, your, your grandchildren don't want to listen to us or don't listen. Right. But every child that I've ever worked with, and, and I mean this, they always tell me, I hear my mom's voice or my dad's voice. My son has told me that so many times. It, it's there. Right. So it's, it really, I believe, serves as more of a confirmation right. that what mom or dad is saying is, is accurate Correct. or valid right. uh, versus I'm not going to listen to you at all. Right. Because isn't it truthful? And I believe there is even data to prove that uh, young people uh, really follow the convictions or the um, the wishes of their parents regarding sex and having sex and all these things. Correct. Um, definitely um, parents and adults that are in the lives of young people are models mm -hmm. and so they're very influential and so what we what we see even as as we were growing up what we see that's what we know. Mm -hmm. um, so it's the same today what they see and um, is, is what they know but there's so much information um, so sometimes children do need just that confirmation yeah. um, from another adult um, but um, they're thinking about it. It's on their minds um, and they have their mind made up. But I can honestly say, um, working with young people, um, if they find a trusted adult mm -hmm. who's straight up with them, yeah. honest with them, Keep willing to, the that's right, willing to <laughs> share their experiences mm -hmm. and being a good listener and non-judgmental, right. non-judgmental, that will open up so many doors for um, those teens um, and preteens to be able to come to um, you and, and say, hey, I was thinking about this, mm -hmm. you know, and just listening or what do you think? Yeah. And not beating them over the head or just, no, you're not going to do that. Right. Um, because then they shut out mm -hmm. and then they seek other people or other things That's that right. may not be good for them. That's right. Because as you stated, it is natural it's human nature Correct. and as young people are going through puberty and their bodies are changing you know they have questions and they're wondering what's happening and why right. why am I having these thoughts and these feelings you know um, 
it, I, I feel sometimes so sorry for our young people because I believe in what I've witnessed is in actuality, they're, they're very innocent, uh, they want to do the right things, That's but right. you can hardly turn on the television and watch a shampoo commercial or even a, a commercial for a sandwich or hamburger without there being some type of sexual overtones and undertones. Right. And so when you have it so much in your face, very blatant, right. it really behooves us as a community, as uh, uh, parents, grandparents, to make sure that we relay our values and our expectations uh, to our children, but also kind of giving them some latitude to uh, experience life on, on their own. And speaking of latitude, you shared with me something that really surprised me, and, and I must admit, I did not know this. You told us specifically in Georgia that teenagers have rights regarding sexual information and all of that. Speak to our viewers about that. Absolutely. Um, every state um, has um, teenagers have rights um, to um, good sexual health. And in the state of Georgia, um, teens have confidentiality rights. Mm -hmm. It's just like when we go to the doctor <laughs> and we have imagine. HIPAA, um, teens also um, have confidentiality rights. And what that means is they can come into um, a health provider and receive services confidential. For example, they can come to the health department. We do encourage um, our teens to come in with their parents, but it's not required. Mm -hmm. If they come in to receive a service, um, then they can receive that service mm. without parental um, consent. And services, uh, share, share with our viewers some of the services. It, it's going to surprise you, I, and I know you, you will say, well, this child lives in my home, <laughs> and as long as I'm paying the bills right. <laughs> and, and paying insurance, what, what kind of rights do they have? That's why I wanted you uh, viewers to make sure you receive this information. Yes, um, teens can come into the clinic and they can receive services anywhere from um, pregnancy tests, STD and STI um, testing, counseling, educational counseling on sexual health, um, contraceptive services. Um, and so we just want to make sure um, that the community is aware um, of it. We absolutely know that every teen is not sexually active. Right. Um, and, but they, they have a choice. They have a choice. And so um, what we're doing is we're just promoting the prevention of teen pregnancy. Mm -hmm. And so we also include abstinence. Um, we want them to delay. We want them to um, be healthy. We want them to stay in school and graduate on time and be successful. Um, we want to have a, a community of successful um, young people. And so um, we want to make sure that if they are interested in coming in, they know what services um, are available um, in the community. Uh, when you mention the, and it is a fact that not every every teenager is uh, engaging in sexual right. activity. Um, I, I think it's kind of kind of funny and ironic that most of a lot of the teenagers who are getting with their friends, especially the boys and the girls, saying you know joking about it or yeah, what they did last night or that this past weekend, that in most cases, it's not even the truth. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Of course, teenagers have their own little language. They want to be cool. They want to fit in. Uh -huh. And so, um, but, you know, as I'm working with youth, I, I give them some, I provide them with some refusal skills for those who um, want to delay. Mm -hmm. And we want them to. But for those who um, choose not to delay, then also we give them um, their options to prevent and so um, what we're doing is just providing the community and families with education um, and we're so proud that it is working but as you yep. stated earlier we still do have some work to do um, but if we just continue to work together um, we'll continue to see a decrease and a de uh, decline in teenage um, pregnancy. Talking about working in the United States the teen pregnancy rate in 2013 among 15 to 19 
year olds was 273,105 live birth rates, wow. which is 26.5 went per 1,000 women in that age group. But that represents a decrease of 10% from the previous year. And that's the st statistic for the United States. So whether it is uh, talking about abstinence or actually making sure our young people uh, receiving the information so that they can make wise choices, it is working. And community, don't shy away from it. We certainly have to keep the dialogue going. Coming up, you'll meet two teenagers who are going to share with us their thoughts on teen pregnancy prevention and give some advice to our young people. Ms. Clatina is going to also join us. You're inside of Education Matters. We'll be right back. I'm Michael Dean Perry. I grew up in Aiken, and it's still home for me. I only wish Aiken Regional's ER was nearby when I played for the NFL. With all the bumps, bruises, sprains and strains, and ER just got easier. You can request a time online for things like earaches, coughs, and colds. There he is! To find out more, just go to AikenRegional.com. The Will Blue Gray Opportunity School has been serving the beautiful Midlands of South Carolina since 1921. Our mission has evolved over the years and we now specialize in helping young people move past their obstacles in order to achieve success. We give students opportunities to lead, to develop social skills, to become active in their communities and to taste success. Don't settle for less than the absolute best for your life. Contact us today to take the next step in your journey towards success. Why go to college anywhere else? For the past four years, U.S. News & World Report has named University of South Carolina Aiken the number one top public comprehensive college in the South. You can attend one of the best universities in the nation with more than 49 majors in academic programs, nationally ranked athletics, and great student life. With small classes, the faculty and staff are focused on your success. USC Aiken, the university focused on you. Margaret's Garden Adult Daycare is coming soon to serve the community of Aiken. We are dedicated to enhancing the emotional, mental, and physical well-being of our clients, allowing seniors to remain in the community as long as possible. A daily fitness plan, games, weekly outings, fine dining, and discussion groups are just a few of the services we offer to keep your loved one active and engaged. Margaret's Garden, we meet you where you are. Weekends are for resting, relaxing, and recharging your batteries. A good weekend can also give you the time to catch up on business you couldn't get to during the week. For Security Federal Bank customers, that means banking business. What does seven-day banking mean to your banker? More importantly, what does it mean to you? At Security Federal Bank, being open seven days a week means just that. That's why our Southside branch on Whiskey Road in front of Target is open for business every day, even Saturday and Sunday. We're proud to be the only bank to be open seven days a week in Aiken County. If we were you, we'd bank with us. When it comes to grilling, I'm the man. Using Don Season in the Light, I'm the grill master. My seasoning is available at Prober, Bilo, Food Line, Reads, and Harvest. Look for it on display in the meat department. Also, visit seasoningdelight.com for information and recipes. Don Seasoning Delight, it's so good. Don Seasoning Delight is so good. Have you made the switch? Make the switch to the original one of a kind. WNRR Gospel 1380 AM. Your new favorite station for the latest in chart topping gospel music, news, and entertainment. So why don't you make the switch today to WNRR Gospel 1380 AM? Also, listen live, 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 live on WNRRGospel.com or download our free iPhone or Android app and search at WNRR Gospel. WNRR Gospel 1380 AM. Your new favorite station. If you are interested in becoming an individual or corporate sponsor of Education Matters, contact Donna Moore Wesby at 803-507-6793 or email at DonnaWesby at AOL.com.
Welcome back inside of the broadcast. Today is Sunday. It's a gorgeous day and we want you to know inside of Education Matters, learning is living. If you've been with us the entire broadcast, it's been uh, a controversial topic. We're talking about teen pregnancy prevention and sex, but it's going to be okay. You're going to make it. You're going to live through it, okay? <laughs> Life continues to go on. If you are a grandparent and you're raising grandchildren and you just don't think you can do it, well, we believe you can. But if you can't, we have some resources in the community to help you have the talk. Data shows that when we expose our children to the right information, to the truth, and it's coming from trusted adults or people in their lives who they know care for them, then chances are it will delay their involvement in sexual activity. Of course, we want to let you know that the views expressed in this broadcast are not necessarily the views of WRDW staff as well as the Board of Education Matters. We're providing you with information that you can use if you decide to educate your community, educate your family, and to help you have a better life. Joining me in the studio now, we've got some young people on the scene, and that's why I got on my jeans. I wanted them to, to be comfortable, to let them know that I can keep it real. I, I work with young people all the time, and uh, we know sometimes it's little things like that that can certainly be of help. Joining me in the studio now, as we continue our discussion on teen pregnancy prevention, we have to my immediate right, <laughs> Miss Jasmine Wells, who is a student at uh, uh, the Academy of Richmond County. Yes, ma'am. And then beside Jasmine yeah. is Mr. Joshua Kerr, nice who is a graduate, you too, son, <laughs> yes, of the same school. And we thank you all for being with us. And of course, Miss Clatina Wimberly, the woman responsible for all of us being here today, continues to join us. May is National Teen Pregnancy Awareness Month. Do I have that right, Miss Clatino? You got it right. And uh, of course, we have a, a very strong message that we want to get across to our young people today. And we've got our students here. Uh, you're involved in an organization closely tied with 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 Miss Clatino that's helping to spread a positive message. What organization is that, Jasmine? The SET, which is which stands for SET Education. Excuse me, Sexual Education for Teens. <laughs> okay, Sexual Education for Teens. Now, what is the mission of that organization? To reduce teenage pregnancy in, of course, Georgia, and try to make sure we all know how to use our contraceptives. Okay, all right. Well, I don't know if you know this, but we live in South Carolina and Georgia. We are part of what's called the Bible Belt. Okay, yes, uh, Joshua, we got some Bible toting <laughs> folks around yes, <laughs> this area. Some. You've met some. Yes, Have they beat you over the head with of it? Of course. Extremely. <laughs> <big over. laughs> well, it's very important, though. You know, I'm, I make light, but when you're talking about one spirituality, uh, beliefs. Uh, what has been passed down from generation to generation, it is very serious. Yes, so when, when you all are talking about uh, teen pregnancy and contraception and all of that, it really can kind of ensue uh, some controversy uh, among families today. How do you uh, suggest that our families watching today have that kind of conversation uh, involving contraception and all of that, if it really kind of goes against their spiritual beliefs, how do we how do we kind of maneuver through that whole conversation? If it goes against your spiritual beliefs, I think that you should look at your surroundings and your environment that you put in, that your child put in more, you know, hmm. importantly, and just think about. You know, this is important to me, but I have to think about the world around him. Not everybody has my same beliefs, so I have to, you know, infer on them that you have to be pr protected in any way, shape, or form that you can mm -hmm. in every aspect of life. That's good. Now, uh, with you all being young people, I know, and you're very, very attractive, both of you. <laughs> I know the guys, you know, give you a hard time, and and you, Josh, I must, you look like a ladies' man. <laughs> so how how do you? 
how have you gone throughout your teenage lives um, and, and still, you know, able to be strong? You have to be above the influence. You can't just sit there and do what everyone else is doing. Hmm. If your friends are sitting here telling you, oh, let's go have sex with this guy, oh, let's just go on a one night stand, <laughs> you have to love yourself enough to not follow hmm. what they're doing. They and don't have your best, like, they don't have your best mindset in, in their mindsets. Do you think terrible. that for those young people who talk like that, who talk the big game, like they're getting all the girls or they're getting all the guys, <laughs> that it's really, really a, a true? Some of them just say it so that they can look cool to their other friends, or some of them could actually be telling the truth, and most likely they're carrying an STD or probably have children. Mm -hmm. So you don't, you don't want to follow someone that's like that. Most of it's just negative peer pressure. Yeah. Well, for but it's real. Peer pressure is real. So uh, when you, I would think if you come from a home where there is open communication and you're able to ask questions or you know you're not met with this uh, again the Bible banging you up against the head <laughs> that you may be more receptive to um, standing strong to your convictions but in a lot of households there are some young people who just feel as if they can't talk to their moms or their dads or maybe even because uh, there are so many grandparents raising grandchildren today Grandparents just don't even know where to begin. Mm. So, so what's your advice uh, to, to those in, in that particular uh, situation? I'd say to continue asking. You, let's say your parents don't want to talk about it, they refuse to talk about it, ask your sister, ask your auntie, ask your cousin, ask someone that's old enough to give you a true answer. Or you can do what I did and continue to start asking your teachers and asking friends and maybe they'll get you into a group like this one where you can learn some things like that. Okay, that's good. Now, Richmond County, uh, Ms. Clatina, you, you of course are representing Richmond County Board of Health. Um, how are you all involved in assisting the families through out this process because as we stated earlier there are some who just don't even know where to begin with a conversation or a dialogue let alone certain services that are available yes um, they can come down to the um, health department we have two locations um, in Richmond County we have one on Laney Walker Boulevard and we also have um, our other location is on Windsor Spring Road um, and so we're open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5 um, and families can bring in their kids <clears throat> so we can, if they would like us to talk to them about sexual health, um, to have the talk, <laughs> um, we can provide them with some resources of some conversation starters. Mm -hmm. um, of course, May is Teen Pregnancy Prevention Month, but October is Let's Talk Month. But I know we have different times of the year that oh, we just um, set aside um, for those um, different topics. But again, I'm encouraging families to have that, um, those conversations year long, yes. not just the month of May or not just during the month um, of October. But again, we're open. Um, I counsel um, young people and um, their family um, all the time. And so um, we are available um, for the community. All right, now turning back to our um, students, now, I'm going to ask you a, a very personal question. You don't necessarily have to answer it, but have you chosen to remain um, sexually inactive? I, what I did with me and my mom talked about it for a long time after my mom came to the Let's Talk event at the mm -hmm. health department in October. And she chose to go ahead and put me on birth control just in case I decide to make that decision mm -hmm. to have sex. But up until then, I'm pretty sure I wanted to stay abstinent. Okay, and why? I don't, I don't really, since I'm a teenager, I don't want to start having sex now. And then let's say I'm in a relationship, I have sex with someone, and I'll continue to have multiple partners before I, I turn maybe 20. I want mm -hmm. to make sure I have maybe, you know, just one partner in my yeah. life. I don't want, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's very admirable. And I tell you, like I was saying earlier, that is a challenge when, when you all, and I know you probably have Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, <laughs> mm. <laughs> newsflash, 
adults, the young people aren't much on Facebook anymore. They're doing Instagram. I'm on Facebook <laughs> for, my okay, for my okay. family. You do Facebook? Okay. For my family. I do it all because I want to make sure I stay connected with the young people because it does make a difference. But you got the, the social media, as I said earlier, commercials, movies. There's nowhere you can turn that there's not some sexual innuendo going on. So it really kind of glamorizes uh, uh, that, you know, sexual activity, like, oh, you're nobody if you aren't doing it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But in reality, no, you are quite the somebody <laughs> if you have enough self-control and good. discipline to wait until you can handle that responsibility That's or for those who have the spiritual beliefs of not um, having sex before you marry, then having the control to wait there. It's all about respect, just respecting yourself and your, your peers. Mm. And that's pretty amazing to hear a young man say respect. <laughs> I, I'm serious because a lot of times guys are like, hey, we just want to get what we want to get and move on to the next <laughs> one. For those, um, let's talk about that. When you find or you hear of a young lady who did not respect herself or as, as Jasmine said earlier, love herself enough to wait, mm -hmm. okay, uh, what do guys actually think? Give us some insight. What do guys actually think about those girls who readily give it up, as they say? Well, guys, a lot of times they label them. So, like, when you don't have enough respect for yourself to, you know, respect your body, then you get labeled. And it's terrible in high school. It happens. But it's just something that happens, you know, throughout life as well. Certain guys, if they see, they find out that label, they prey on that. Mm -hmm. And other guys, they'll pray, just... Not P-R-A-Y, P-R-E-Y. <laughs> yes, they prey on that. And just like, but then there's other guys who, if they hear that label, whether it's true or not, because mm -hmm. a lot of false rumors go around, but whether it's true or not, once they hear that label, they're just like, oh, well, I don't want that. I want someone who has much respect for themselves <laughs> as I have for myself. That's beautiful. There are, we've prepared, Miss Clotina has prepared a slide presentation to help our uh, young people, our families, uh, to have this dialogue because this is a family issue. As I said at the beginning of the, of the broadcast, um, the Center for Disease Control considers this as a top public health issue, which it certainly is, but they also consider it a winnable battle. Mm -hmm. Why do you believe that is accurate? I believe that it's a winnable battle because if you take the time out of your day, if you're a parent, to just talk to your child, because that's how I started. My dad and my mom talking to me from a very early age, telling me that not necessarily this is right, this is wrong, but this is smart. Ah. This is what you should. This is what you should do, or this is what you might want to do if you want to be, you know, a little more su successful in this area. I so like I think that. if a parent, you know, just takes the time out their day when their child comes home, mom, we just had a sex ed class. Mom, I just saw this. Mom, I just saw. Okay, stop. Let's talk about it. Let's, yeah. This was happening. This is what can happen, and this right. what might happen. As a matter of fact, you hit you hit the very first slide, dead on the head. <laughs> Show us why teen pregnancy is such a bad idea. But I like the way you you kind of had that caveat there that your your folks didn't necessarily say was right or wrong, but what is smart. Because that doesn't help. That just makes you think, okay, well, this is wrong, and I actually have an accident. I'm not going to bring it up to you. I'm, I'm, I think I'm in trouble. Hmm, very Instead, good. That's let so, me think you can help me. That's so wise. You know, I know you, you get to work with these young people yeah, each, a beautiful you know, thing. E each month. So what does it do for you to see these young people who are so articulate and really are courageous enough to talk about such a topic? Yes, um, it's very humbling. I'm very um, pleased um, and grateful to be working uh, with such <laughs> wonderful um, young people um, in the set. Um, and they're two of 15 okay. that, I, that I, um, I advise. And they're doing great things. Um, and they're going to do greater things and bigger things All right, um, in the community. Telling us not to have sex is not enough. What does that mean, Jasmine? Really, it just gives me more questions. Why not? Just, it makes no sense you just tell me you don't have sex. It makes you want to go do it. Just like, oh, you can't have that candy. I want it now. Uh -huh. so. <laughs> it makes you even more curious. Yes. Yeah. It's well, a that, lot of that, curiosity. That makes a lot of sense. Then uh, another slide. And, and uh, I want to say to our viewers, uh, this is a great slide. It's called Talking Back. What teens want adults to know 
about teen pregnancy. <laughs> so, you know, families, if you're out there and you're not quite sure where to start or how to start, this is some great information. Whether we're having sex or not, we need to be prepared. Now, this is controversial, but what do you young people have to say about that? Okay, <laughs> that's kind of what I said about how my mom put me on birth control before I decided to have sex, because you don't want to wait until the last minute. Let's say it's an in-the-moment thing, and maybe it's prom night, and you're all turned and excited, and you haven't even thought about having sex, but let's say you just want to go have it that night, and you don't have a time to go get maybe any type of contraceptive or can't get birth control or anything like that, then you'll just end up probably doing the wrong thing and not being prepared to do what you're about to do. Mm -hmm. If you're in that situation, like, let's say your partner, male or female, they've had it before and you haven't and you don't know anything. You're ignorant about it. You only know what you've seen on the movies. So, like, they can tell you whatever they want and mm -hmm. you basically you basically believe it. You have no prior knowledge to, oh, well, this might break, oh, this might happen, that you have no knowledge. So you're in the dark. And then you're vulnerable. You're vulnerable to what that person says. And that's why uh, we say in this broadcast, learning is living, but also uh, when you know better, you do better. Mm -hmm. And that's what this campaign so is all about educating it's not saying yes we're giving you the license to go out and have as much yeah. sex as you want <laughs> right. unprotected sex that if you mess around and and you get a have a baby you just go take care of it we're not advocating right. that it's about information Correct. Absolutely. when you uh, obliterate ignorance it really opens the door for for i believe uh, smarter decision making and I believe that's essentially what you are saying today now I love this next slide and it kind of reinforces a message we want to get across today we really think about what you think men and parents even if we don't always act like it that <laughs> young people that y'all should wear that around your neck <laughs> Is it true? Yes, it's very true. I know, I think one of the popular saying is, do as I say, not as I do. Oh, that's terrible. That's if awful. You, you see when you see your parent <laughs> doing something, you're like, okay, well, I can do this too, or I want to do this now. And that's it's, right. It's not, it's not fair. It's not fair, and it definitely sends the wrong message. Right. To interject there, I just think yes. as I'm working with um, not just the young people, but families, I do encourage them to remember that um, we're models. Um, so we have to remember and that modeling can be in a positive way or a negative way. But we want to display a positive um, model um, so our children um, will see um, the right thing to, um, will see um, the right thing to do and hopefully make some um, good decisions. Very good. Well, you're hearing a lot of great <laughs> information today. And I know it may be a little uncomfortable to you, but that's okay. As we said at the very beginning, it doesn't mean that you will not, uh, something good or great won't come out of this today. Uh, why prevention? Well, it costs money, okay? <laughs> it costs money to have uh, babies and you are a teenager and we're gonna talk about that in the next segment. You're inside of Education Matters. Don't go anywhere. CDC works 24-7 to save lives and protect people. This month's Vital Signs focuses on teen pregnancy. We've made progress. Over the past 20 years, the number of births to teen mothers has decreased. But nevertheless, in 2012, the last year for which we have complete data, more than 300,000 15 to 19 year olds gave birth. One out of four of those mothers was between 15 and 17 years old. Teen pregnancy is a real problem. It contributes to and perpetuates the cycle of poverty. Doctors, nurses, and other healthcare providers can provide the facts. We can provide this information in a manner that is both factual and respectful. Young men and young women share responsibility to avoid teen pregnancy. Let's support our teens so they delay having sex until they're older. It's good news that the rate of teen pregnancy is decreasing. Let's help teens take control over their future. Now it's time for your Education Matters community announcement. The Summer Youth Employment Program is underway. 
Attention graduating high school seniors, if you're on track for graduating this June 2015 and you live in Aiken, Allendale, Bamberg, Barnwell, Calhoun, and Orangeburg counties, you might be able to qualify for the Workforce Investment Act program for the summer employment. For more information, please contact the Aiken Housing Authority, Angela Mackey on 803-663-6848, extension 203. This has been your Education Matters Community Announcement. Welcome back inside That's the what? broadcast. We're having a great time here inside of Education Matters. And we're talking about teen pregnancy prevention because May is Teen Pregnancy Prevention Month. And uh, we want you to know that pregnancy costs a lot of money. Why prevention? Why prevention, Ms. Clatina? Um, as you state, it does not only cost us um, a lot of money, um, but again, I want to emphasize meaning taxpayers. Taxpayers, yes. yes. <laughs> taxpayers, <laughs> yes. It costs the taxpayers lots of money, millions of dollars. Um, and we just want to uh, reiterate the importance of our teens um, staying in school um, because we um, find out that uh, when teens um, have babies, then they're more likely to not finish school and graduate on time. It's That's a right. struggle. Um, again, so we want to make sure that our teens know um, that um, it is their choice, but we want them to um, be very well educated before making um, their decisions very good. Um, so they can be successful. Very good. And also just to add to that, uh, when teenagers have babies, uh, it increases health problems and also unemployment, and which equates to poverty. So it really behooves us again to uh, provide the information and uh, data shows that with the information and with you explaining your wishes to your children and grandchildren, those pregnancy rates will continue to decrease. Contact information for you, Ms. Yes. Clatina. Um, I can be contacted at the Richmond County Health Department. Again, there's two locations, um, one on Laney Walker Boulevard and our other location is on Windsor Spring Road. And the contact number is 706 721-5800, 706-721-5800. Awesome job. Ms. Jasmine, <laughs> we thank you, we wish you the best. Thank you. Joshua, we thank you and wish you the best as well. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for your courage in coming on the broadcast today, sharing information that we believe will help our young people. Thank, thank you, you for having us. All right, God <laughs> bless you. All right, it's been a great broadcast. We thank you so much for being with us today. We thank you for being willing to even entertain this dialogue. If you are nervous about the conversation, there are resources available to help you because we must, we must, we must have the conversation to help our teenagers know that they can make wise choices and that they certainly have your support. All right, again, we thank you for your support and your love. We thank you for watching. My name is Donna Moore Westby, your host of Education Matters, where learning is living. Have a blessed day.